As a little girl, I really loved ballet and I wanted to learn how to dance like a little ballerina. And I did not know that just wanting to express myself through dance would result in severe abuse that I suffered from my ballet teacher. Being called out in the middle of the class, being called fat, ugly, being called an immovable ton of waste, being embarrassed, being made as an example of what not to do, uh, and being constantly screamed at, being singled out, put in the middle of the class just to be ridiculed, and, and hearing my teacher encourage other girls in my class to make fun of me because I was fat and I was tall and I would never be a ballerina. And uh, that was my experience dancing. Hey everyone, my name is Katarina. Um, today I want to talk to you uh, about the difficult subject of bullying. I know a lot of people suffer different types of bullying. There is no type that's better than, than the other. But what I want to specifically talk about as I relay my personal experience to you is uh, body shaming because I have suffered a lot of that throughout my life. Today, I am happily pursuing a lot of different types of physical expression. Um, I model and I model for artists. I model for figure drawing, which involves being completely naked in front of artists that draw you and sketch your figure. Um, I'm an actress. I act in um, big productions such as Netflix shows, Hulu shows, um, as well as local um, small kind of feature film productions in Columbia, South Carolina, where I live. And I also um, create videos, I create content, and I use my appearance to relate to my audiences and I find a lot of happiness in that. This, the place where I am now is a lot different from from the place where, where being bullied and being body shamed got me before. So I want to kind of take you through my experiences and hopefully show you um, and share with you how I was able to begin the process of healing because these experiences certainly do traumatize us and sometimes it's very hard, very, very hard to get out, get away from, from these feelings of shame, feelings of unworthiness, feelings of not liking yourself, worse yet, hating yourself, your body, any part of you. So first I wanna talk about experiences in ballet. As I mentioned, I was very interested in learning how to dance. Um, I grew up in Moscow, Russia, so I had a lot of exposure to arts and theater early on in life because uh, my parents and my grandma and my Russian grandma did a lot to introduce me to these forms of um, artistic expression. And I saw a lot of plays, I saw a lot of um, ballets, I saw opera, I saw I, when we went to different museums, I saw these beautiful paintings that models hundreds of years ago posed for, and I was fascinated by all this, and one of my biggest aspirations was just to learn how to dance ballet. I thought it was the most beautiful form of expression. Um, when my mom asked me if I wanted to do some sport or some kind of a physical activity, uh, I, I said I want to learn how to dance ballet, uh, because that was just an obvious choice for me. Uh, and, and she did ask me, she did say, you know, are you sure about that? Because, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough uh, discipline to learn. And I, and I was ready, I was up to the challenge, I was ready to learn it, I was ready to do my best, um, and I was prepared for whatever comes my way, or so I thought. My experience began rough, and it stayed rough for the two and a half years that I kept going to that class. So what happened was my ballet teacher um, was uh, ex-Bolshoi uh, theater ballerina, which is a pretty high standard uh, in, in 
Russian ballet. It's it's kind of like the the top of the achievement. If you get into the Bolshoi theater and you dance with them, just like one of the best worldwide known theaters out in the world, then you know you've made it. Um, she was a 70 something year old lady, so very much elderly, but she was very much in form still. She was very um, uh, she was very like she she had this perfect posture she, it was obvious that she was a ballerina she kind of walked very gracefully and she was just I thought she was very beautiful I, I admired her very much but what started almost immediately is extreme severe bullying um, that was just absolutely devastating so um, it happened that I was a very tall child and I'm a very tall adult. I am six foot three as an adult. As a child, I was taller than other kids, um, obviously, and I was not the skinniest one. I've always been kind of curvy. Now, I've, I've struggled with weight, but it was after these experiences. Um, I was just, I, you would say I was probably a normal, regular looking child, but a little tall if I was growing up here in the US. In Russia, uh, most of the kids just in general are not very tall and most of the girls that want to pursue ballet are tiny, they're petite, they're small, they're very lean and skinny and they're, they're just very small. They're, they're very small and I was not one of them. I stood out very, very much. It was pretty radical and I immediately felt very out of place but I, my passion, my love for ballet propelled me to go on and to, to pursue this class even though right off the bat I felt like uh, you know I don't really fit in here but um, what really started, what, what, what bothered me most was not how much I stood out because uh, other girls did not really care. I wasn't a very social kid, I, I was kind of introverted, so I wasn't really trying to make friends and, and it didn't bother me, you know, just being in a group of people that didn't look like me, but it bothered my teacher, um, who by the way was paid uh, for these classes. Um, she uh, almost, like I would say, first or second lesson, she started uh, bullying me, um, very outright bullying me. She would come up to me and she would say, you're, you know, you're really fat. You're never going to be a ballerina. I don't know why you're in this class. You're never going to make it in ballet. You, you should be ashamed of how you look. You are a giant. You are just absolutely ugly. She, she just, she just completely, I mean, it didn't start, it didn't get to that point, it didn't escalate, um, you know, during the first lesson, but it, it, it got up to speed pretty rapidly. She would use me as an example um, for other girls to look at, so she would like bring me in the middle of the class and she would tell me to stand there and she would ask, okay, do this movement and I would do it and she would say, okay, everyone look, um, this is how you should not do this. This is how, you see how bad this looks? This is not the way to do this and then so she would like teach lessons like this she had these very long acrylic nails and she would like dig into my back and like to make me straighten my back and she would just while she was doing that she would be right very close to me and she would like tell me you know you're you're ugly you are so fat you're so ugly you are never gonna be a dancer why are you keep, why do you keep coming i'm so tired of you um, you never learn anything, you never get better, you never, you're, you never lose any weight, are you even trying, do you even care, how is it possible for a girl to be this giant? And it was devastating and the worst part about that is I totally would not tell the whole truth about these lessons to my parents because I was very ashamed, I felt very bad for being such a bad ballerina i i didn't know how to lose weight um because i was you guys i was seven years old that was seven eight nine that's even perhaps six seven eight i don't exactly remember but no i believe it was seven eight nine or something along these lines um and so uh, i um i have to say that it was um very traumatizing to admit to these incidents because I felt like it was my fault. So I, I felt bad about telling my parents about this. And so I would say that, you know, I would say a little bit about these lessons, like 
yeah, I'm not really succeeding or like mm, the teacher doesn't really like me or like mm, I have a lot of more work to do or like sometimes I would cry after the lesson. Um, but mostly I would just keep it to myself, keep it bottled up, keep it within myself and, and I just wanted to keep going. I don't know why, but there was this this little bit of strength within me that was that was propelling me to keep going because I wanted all I wanted to do was learn how to dance ballet and, and I wasn't ready to give up and also I felt like even though it was completely almost unbearable to be in the lesson to, to endure all of this um, at the same time I was kind of like I was in this mad rush like you know this term escalating commitment I was like more <laughs> more inclined to try to succeed no matter what try to win no matter what try to just overcome this um, this experience and, and I and I this this kind of unreasonable um, addiction to my teachers um, validation started building with every time she would like criticize me embarrass me she would call me uh, like a like a, a cow that weighs a ton um, all in Russian she would she would say that you were immovable um, immovable pile of trash like she would create these um, names that are completely dehumanizing like it's not even you know it's not even like a living being she'd call me like a pile of immovable trash like these things that are things she would come up with these things that are very bulky weigh a ton and are disgusting and that's what she would compare me to she would call me these names so um I became obsessed with seeking some kind of validation. So I would try, I would crawl out of my skin to get her to say something nice to me, to compliment me or something. And actually, bizarrely, maybe it was because she was in some sick way addicted to that dynamic, who knows, but a few times it did happen. A few times she, she praised me. I would write praise me, it was like, it was like, I didn't know where it came from, it was very sudden, it didn't seem very logical, I would be doing the same thing, she would just tell me that it was completely ugly and horrible and that's the example of how not to do it, then all of a sudden there would be like praise, it happened very rarely, but it was very sporadic, very out of nowhere, and it took me by surprise, but it always felt so redeeming, somehow it felt like a drug at the time i didn't obviously six seven i didn't know like what an addiction is but i was definitely addicted to that validation to that approval um, from a person that was severely abusive as a teacher um, so yeah meanwhile my parents kept paying for the lessons i kept insisting on going so i would cry after the lessons more than enough times to where my parents became concerned and they said um are you sure you want to pursue ballet it doesn't seem like it's fun um but i was committed and then a few times i'd be like on a random day i'd be like ah you know I'm, i can quit and then my parents would be like well you know if you've already committed then why are you suddenly wanting to quit so i would kind of convince myself to get back but again they didn't really know the extent as to how bad this actually was and i hid a lot of that um i, I almost there are some things that I, I swear that are crossed out of my memory. Like there are some things that I just, just erase. Not erase, but they're so lodged so deep down that I just pretty much forgot them because there were days that were completely miserable and I was bullied literally from the beginning of the lesson to the end. In fact, it's, it's like, I think some, I mean, other girls, when someone's very much bullied by like an authority figure, like a teacher, no one really feels comfortable you know obviously like stepping up and defending that person because then you're gonna be the target but i could see that a lot of girls even though i didn't really talk to anyone and didn't really make any friends some of them were kind of uncomfortable watching this even though they were little girls i could see that some of them were disturbed and they could like relate not to the way it looked maybe but to the way that it was just completely horribly terrifyingly cruel and some were i could see that some were kind of like uh you know weren't sure why because she wasn't spending that time teaching them she wasn't spending that time giving constructive criticism or giving some kind of something to the rest of the class she was focused on 
just completely obliterating me and my any kind of sense of dignity as a child, as a little girl. Um, and so at some point I broke uh, my spine. So uh, not really my spine, but my coccyx bone, like little piece of it broke off. I fell in class. Um, that was about two and a half years into it. And I got up and it didn't feel like anything. But like two weeks later, I started feeling pain. Like I couldn't get up, like get up from a chair or sit down without feeling pain. And it got worse and worse and worse. And then finally we discovered that it was, um, a piece of coccyx that broke off that was causing that and it took me a year to heal it took me a year of homeschooling to get over that um, I never got to wear pointy shoes um, because my teacher said that I was too fat for that maybe honestly that might have saved the worse me from a worse fall um, because uh, actually I started gaining weight um, throughout that process as well because I when you're told that you're fat, immovable pile of trash, you, believe it or not, you kind of start feeling like it. And so I started eating more, um, actually, uh, not really noticing that, but it, there was a psychological change uh, that took place then. So um, after a year of homeschooling, not being able to move, not being able to get up and sit down without feeling excruciating pain, I gained even more weight. And that, that's when kind of my weight issues started. But um, what I want to talk about is the, the lasting effect um, of that ballet experience. Um, because at the time I thought I was all right. I would even kind of tell the story like to brag. I would tell people, you know, can you believe this is what my teacher did to me? And I kept showing up and I kept going there because I still wanted to dance. But the thing is, even though I was kind of resisting that severe traumatizing bullying, I at the same time was kind of absorbing these remarks, these, um, these uh, insults, these just completely obliterating attacks. And even though I was resisting in my own consciousness, I was like, nope, I'm still here, I'm still doing it, it doesn't bother me, I'm gonna be in my own zone, in my own mind. I um, have not realized at the time, obviously being a kid, that this, this stuff really stuck with me. I might not have accepted it completely, but it, because of it, it was so consistent, so every single class it happened, and it went on for more than two years, um, the effects took place. And in my 20s, um, and I'm now 26, in my 20s, I've been doing a lot of work as to healing, to, to heal that trauma. Um, and I realized that there was a lot of shame, a lot of body shame that I still carried um, from that time um, that that was still with me, that prevented me from doing things I wanted to do, that made me feel very afraid, very self-conscious, very just um, kind of shut in and defensive about my body, about my appearance, about just talking even to people and kind of thinking, are they looking at me? Are they judging me? Do they do they think I'm fat? Do they think I'm a, a, a movable like pile of trash? Which it's it none of it is really often conscious thoughts. It's something that's happening in the back of your mind. So moving forward to from that experience and then gaining a bunch of weight, then I reemerged and went back to kind of like regular daytime you know school where I wasn't at home anymore and I was interacting with my peers and going to classes and my my coccyx back spine whatever healed and I could get up and sit down without much pain um, but I gained a lot of weight and I was overweight very much so and um, I wouldn't say severely but it I felt it it was visible it was I, I felt it I was I felt big and I was big, and on top of being very tall, I was physically big. Um, and so I started going back to school, and then more bullying, of course, started. This, that then I was like, in, I think 11, 12, 13, and, um, <laughs> and these are tough years. 
So kids would call me fat and call me just, you know, fat, any kind of variations of fat. Um, and, and I was bullied for that because every time I would try to make something, make some advance, make some, um, express myself in some way, um, or, or kind of try to maybe like get, you know, turn people's attention to me, um, just to share something or be funny or just, just to kind of interact with my environment, with my peers, um, people, people, kids, my peers would be like, oh, you're fat, shut up, you know, oh, you're a fatty, just what are you talking about, you know, all of that. So then I became very annoyed by that. I was like, okay, I don't feel in control of my body. I felt completely out of control of my body in ballet. Because as a, as a little girl that was constantly bullied by my teacher, I felt like I couldn't really do anything about it. I felt completely out of control over my body. I couldn't really lose weight. In fact, I felt like I started gaining weight. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't stop her from, from bullying me. I didn't want to stop going. And I just felt like my body was out of my control. And the only thing I could control is what I physically do. My showing up, my attendance, my effort. Um, so I completely kind of disowned my body. So then kind of re-emerging into the school environment after a year of being at home, um, I realized that I was still out of control of my body because I didn't know how to lose weight after a year of being completely physically pretty much inactive, gaining a lot of weight, um, being tall, I couldn't make myself sh shrink, I couldn't make myself shorter. So I felt even more out of control of my body. I was like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? I don't know how to lose weight. I just gained a bunch and I want some social status. I want to be able to hold my own ground. I want to be able to express myself. I want to be able to make friends. I need to figure something out. I decided to focus on other qualities. So I started being kind of like a class clown. Um, I started kind of some risque behavior. I'd skip classes. I'd say some one of kind of like edgy things that could have been punished by teacher because they were like maybe not cursing but close to it maybe not something profane but like almost and i was witty enough to make teachers laugh sometimes even so they didn't really punish me so i was very clever about it and i think my cleverness kind of developed even more because i was like okay if i can't do anything about my body if that's not going to be a factor um, that I can use to my advantage based on people's perception of what I look like then I got to use some other tools because I don't want to be I don't want to be an outcast forever I don't want to be shut in I don't want to I don't want to just give up so I started really focusing on other things and I would I would use my physique to be even more um, uh, even more scandalous so I felt like people were kind of appalled by my height by my weight by my bigness so I was like okay well I'm gonna show them now and I started wearing really bright colors that would clash just crazy outfits wild makeup that wasn't allowed really or like not to that extent and people would and teachers and some other like administrators in my school would write me up and I would constantly say like why do you keep dressing like this this is wild like no one wears this and I just kept doing it and it kind of started working surprisingly um, maybe because I was I decided that I was gonna be confident despite my appearance it's, it started working I started getting some traction with my peers some kids kind of started focusing less on bullying me and started focusing more on like having these like witty little repartees with me and we would just like kind of try to outsmart each other so I, from being a fat bullied girl that was taller than everyone else I became this odd character that no one really knew what was going on with me but I was I was running my own show, or at least it felt like that. Then all of that kind of changed because I moved to United States and it was a brand new country and I didn't know English and I had to, I mean, I knew how to write or like read quite a bit actually, but I could not speak, I've never spoken. And so I became, my body became less of an issue because my new issue was I can't express myself, like I can't, all of the wittiness, all of the, the cool skills I acquired being smart, a smart ass and 
um, you know, outsmarting other kids in the room. <laughs> um, I lost it because I couldn't, could no longer do that because I couldn't speak the language. So um, that was, I mean, that was, and I, and I can't say that I was bullied for that. No one really bullied me. I was just kind of, you know, seen as a little bit strange because the uh, perception of Russia in the United States is a little, like, scary and kids in high school and I went to like this small town school and here in the United States and South Carolina and it was uh, a lot of small-minded people or like their parents were small-minded so they didn't really know much about Russia except it was like scary and so they looked at me like who is that is she gonna kill us um, <laughs> maybe not maybe I'm, I'm dramatizing that but that's what it kind of felt like they were like hmm. they didn't really bother me they didn't really talk to me either and I didn't I didn't try to talk to anyone because I was embarrassed about how I sound um, so I can't really say there was any bullying in, in high school in the United States actually at all and then I went to college and then you know here I am now after all these years and kind of the bullying stopped and I would say at, at the weight, like the weight body shaming was, was what I experienced most in terms of bullying. Now I want to move forward to the last part of this conversation. And I want to talk about how the healing, the, how the healing occurred, how, the, how I initi initiated the healing, how it's still going, and why I find it so extremely therapeutic and empowering and amazing to be able to um, pose for artists, to be able to model, to be able to act, um, to be able to use my appearance in my own um, expression, such as like social media and, and stuff I write and, and stuff I publish um, as, as means of connecting with people. What I realized, I would say about two two years ago was that I did not heal from this bullying uh, not from the ballet teacher not from the kids in my school um, because I dealt with it at the time I got over it in a way and I was able to make progress despite my looks but what I realized is that I that, that feeling of being out of control of my body and feeling ashamed of my body and feeling like I can't do anything about it like it's it's a detriment like it can't ever be something that I appreciate something that serves me because it seemed like it was always working against me in ballet with the kids it seemed like it was against me it seemed like my body was like a plan to make me fail by some higher powers and I felt like I couldn't really do anything to change it I felt like it was um, it was there just as a, as a burden and I did not like anything about it I, I tried not to think about it but um, there were very few things that I, that I appreciated about myself I felt completely out of control and I felt like I was fat deep inside that's what I felt um, even though it was the opinion of others, I felt like I was a big fat giant that looked horrible. And it was what was inside there. Um, but it was deep down because I dealt with it. And so I like I came up with this persona that was like kind of smart and, and you know, kind of like witty and confident no matter what. And it worked when I was a teenager. But when in my 20s, you know, I realized that it's not serving me because there's still deep, deeply rooted issues that would come out, surface every once in a while. And um, one of them was unworthiness. I felt very unworthy of being here, like as in being alive. Um, I got into some pretty traumatic situations um, where my life was at risk and I was kind of ready to go and there were some other th there were some other sides to that story but but part of it was because I kind of felt like I was out of control of this experience being alive having the body having the body that I have not being able to do anything with it and being punished for having it just for the looks that I got I felt unworthy I felt unworthy of any respect, any love, um, 
And uh, also another aspect of that was that I got into some unhealthy relationships plenty of times. And uh, they weren't particularly abusive, but they would not be good for me. And, and I knew that, and it was almost a conscious decision. Partially, partially was like, no, it's gonna work. But it, some part of me was like, I deserve a relationship that's not good for me because I'm ugly, because I'm not worthy, because I'm fat, because I'm out of control of my body, because that's the only thing that, that a person like me would deserve is, is this. So I realized that what needed to change most was, uh, besides learning to love and accept myself, which is, I feel like, a lifelong journey for most people, um, at least for me, it definitely, certainly is. But I thought that most, most change needed to be applied um, to me feeling so out of control of my body. Um, I didn't have any healthy boundaries and relationships and friendships. Um, I would let people just kind of come into my space and and do whatever they want and, and you know, dump whatever emotions they wanted on me. And I was just constantly all over the place. And I still am in, in some ways, but I've made a huge progress and I'm very proud of that. But so I realized what was what needed most healing was my perception of how much control I have over this body. And, and to start that process, I had to accept the way that I look, the way that I am, and who I am, uh, with all the flaws, with everything. And it was hard, it was hard to do, because I would try and I would kind of practice it and meditate and study, stand, stand in front of the mirror um, and tell myself I love myself, and then I would scream and cry and just scream and shout, and, no, I hate myself, you know? Um, and. Um, and it was it was a uh, it was a tough period of time, but I realized that I needed to get a sense that I am in control of my body, uh, because as a child I really was not. Um, as a teenager, maybe a little more, but I didn't choose to, to take that route. But as an adult, I am fully, completely in control of my body. Yes, my body is an organism. Yes, I I have certain things I have to accept, and I do now, but. Um, there are things that are changeable, that are things that are completely in my hands. The way that I eat, the way that I exercise, the way the things that I do, such as physical expression, the clothes I wear, um, what I do with my body, how I show up in my body, um, how I feel in my body. Do I feel at home? Do I feel like an alien that has, that has just been like stuck in this body that I can't have no control over, so I had to make that choice, and it wasn't uh, an easy choice because it took a lot of time um, to, to build up to that acceptance, but essentially that acceptance made me realize that feeling so out of control of my body made me completely and totally physically inactive in my um, later teenage years, in my early 20s. Um, I was not active, I was not moving much, I was not doing any sports. I felt very irritated when people would ask me if I play basketball or if I model because all I wanted to say is like, no, I can't do any sports because I'm fat and no, I, I'm not a model because I'm too fat to be a model. I, like It was just such a deep, angry feeling and I would get so angry when people would ask me these questions and I never knew why. And then I finally, when I started this process, I realized why, because I still felt so ashamed of myself and the way that I look. Um, and then as I began this process, what I started changing is with acceptance of my body, I began realizing that I like to exercise. I actually really enjoy physical activity. I enjoy walking, I enjoy jogging, I enjoy lifting weights, I enjoy uh, being out and about, I enjoy doing yoga, I enjoy just just being, doing whatever I want, hula hooping, running around, just dancing. Um, I enjoy all these things and I remember that I enjoyed them as a little girl. Um, I was pretty active actually before ballet and before I was completely kind of destroyed in a sense. Um, but it's a necessary part of my journey. I'm actually grateful for that experience even though it was extremely traumatizing because this is what brought me here and this is what made me consciously accept and embrace myself and learn to love myself no matter what. 
So with, with this healing, I began um, exercising and enjoying that and like feeling joy, not to lose weight, but just to be active, just to do something that I enjoy. And I allowed myself to enjoy exercise before I looked perfect, whatever that meant. Um, and I began choosing better relationships. I began being better about deciding what's good for me because instead of punishing myself subconsciously for how ugly I am or how fat I am or how out of control of my body I may be, um, I started embracing everything about myself. So I started looking for people that embrace everything about me. Started looking for, for relationships, both friendship and romantic relationships that that I was I was accepted and respected and appreciated just the way that I am because that's how I started feeling about myself so I wasn't looking for anything damaging, negative, um, traumatic, bad. I was no longer interested in that. Another thing that changed was setting boundaries um, and being able to tell people when they make me feel sad, they make me feel you know, in, in some sort of way that's not positive, that, that makes me self-conscious or makes me feel um, not appreciated or makes me feel um, just maybe like they're dumping too much of their stuff on me. And whereas before I couldn't really say no and I felt like I deserved all of that and I better tolerate and, and better not speak out and better keep my, keep my peace and, and just you know, endure whatever comes my way, I started expressing these boundaries. I started telling people no. I started, you know, setting these boundaries in different ways, such as, you know, establishing certain times when I want to have these engagements and certain times where I cannot and will not be reached. Um, and, and, you know, in, in particular cases, I would, you know, sometimes end a conversation or end a, a relationship or a friendship uh, that did not serve uh, me, that was not healthy for me, that was not positive for me, just as soon as I felt it. And I had to learn how to do that. And it was scary at first, but then I realized that it, it serves me and it serves the other person better than, than just enduring and, and going through something that, that, you, that, that is not good for you. So this healing has been tremendous. It's been significant. Um, it has uh, taught me how how to be at home in my body and how to feel safe and feel beautiful and feel self-love and and be able to appreciate me um, with all of my flaws, with all of my weight, whether I put it on or put it off, whether I'm more physically active or less physically active, whether I look good in the mirror to myself when I wake up or I look awful in the mirror when I wake up to myself, just accepting myself. Now, is it a complete journey? Absolutely not. I still work on it and there's still challenges that arise, but the most healing experience for me has been posing for artists um, and especially figure modeling. I've been doing that quite a bit lately and as I mentioned, what it involves is being completely nude um, in front of a group of artists um, or sometimes just a few uh, that paint you, that draw you, that sketch you. I found that to be extremely therapeutic because I, I wanted to do it honestly just out of curiosity and I was kind of self-conscious and nervous before I did it for the first time but when I did it for the first time I had this revelation in the process where I realized that the, the artists they weren't looking at me, they were looking at the reflection of light mm -hmm. and the shadow um, off of me. I just realized that their experience of seeing me was very different from them looking at me as, as a person, as Katarina. Uh, they were looking at something else. It, it was connected to my presence, obviously, but it was beyond persona. It was beyond who I am. It was beyond me as a person. It was something so ethereal, so beautiful. It was as if I, I could be a muse without doing anything. I just had to be present. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to be pre to pretend to be anyone else. I didn't have to look a certain way or not look a certain way. All I had to do was 
assume a pose and be still and be present. And I found that to be tremendously healing. I've never gotten tired of doing that. And um, I've done some pretty long poses as well. And uh, yes, sometimes it's physically challenging, especially when I've chosen the wrong pose because it, it would get very uncomfortable. But there's so much in this for me. There's so much healing in it for me. There's so much relief, so much liberation. It's like everything that I've endured in that ballet class is healed by, by artists. Creating art from my liking, from, from my presence. And, and without even looking at me as a person, by just looking at, at the reflection of light um, and my shadow. Uh, and it's just incredible because how my ballet experience started was the pursuit of art. All I wanted to do is learn how to dance like a ballerina. I didn't want to be a ballerina. I, I have no ambition like that. I, I didn't really want to dance on stage of the Bolshoi theater either. I, it's just, I didn't think of it as a career. But I just wanted to, to be part of this art because what I fell in love with was the form of art, was the expression of art through ballet. And what I got was a lot of trauma and a lot of cruelty. And though I'm grateful for that experience, I still think that this teacher should not have been teaching. Um, clearly, as I understand now, when we, when we really judge someone or, or severely prosecute someone for an issue, it's not their issue, it's our own issue. So perhaps she had deep, deep insecurities about her own appearance or memories of, of potentially fears of being not good enough when she was little and trying to become a ballerina. Who knows? We will never know. I don't know if she's still alive. Um, she would be very, very, very old at this time if she was. But I forgive her. I, I do forgive her and, I, and I'm compassionate towards whatever her struggle was that made her abuse a child that she didn't know that I didn't do anything to her to deserve this. Um, if you do this to just a child, just a young girl. Um, and she really disturbed my sense of femininity. I, I didn't feel like I was good enough to be a woman. I felt very disconnected from my feminine side because to me ballet was the ultimate feminine expression. All the little dresses and the movements of hands and the, and the beautiful music. I felt like it was so feminine, so beautiful, so incredibly just artistic. And being so separated as the outcast, as the the the, the, the immovable pile of trash that weighs a ton, as she called me. It felt very separate from that world of beautiful ballet. That made me disconnected from my own feminine expression. Whereas posing for artists, naked, completely, absolutely nude, um, makes me reconnect with my own femininity. It, and it's, it's, it's unconditional. It makes me experience unconditional love towards myself because I see how I inspire art without really being anything or changing anything or becoming skinny or, or being smaller or all these things that are, that are not me, um, just as I am. Inspiring art, being a true muse and not, um, it, it's really healing. It's really healing, especially um, for that part of me that still remembers and still and is still somewhat damaged by, by that ballet experience that I had. So this has been extremely healing. Of course, acting and um, modeling for like photographs and, and incorporating my appearance into my content through videos, through selfies, through just posing for fun pictures every now and then. That's fun, and every time I do this and feel good about doing it, it's another little bit of healing because it allows me to love myself the way that I am. Even if I'm not perfect, even if I'm not perfect according to someone else's standard. And that's a very important. I wanted to make this video um, primarily to share where I'm coming from because I do use a lot of my physical presence nowadays in my work and in my self-expression uh, 
uh, and I wanted to share this with, with some of you guys that uh, might be wondering uh, what's my story with this and, and um, if I've ever really known what it's like to be extremely bullied because I certainly have and this experience has also taught me to um, to be very mindful of people's self-perception because a lot of times people that feel very insecure that have been traumatized through severe bullying that have been um, abused they they might appear as um, someone who's judgmental someone who might say cruel or rem remark or or make you feel uncomfortable make you feel less than usually these people are um, coming from a very dark place and I've learned to have compassion towards that because um, sometimes when I observe this um, instead of judging the person for their action I can think of some ways where or some places some dark places where this action could be coming from and finding compassion finding acceptance um, for for people that that express themselves in ways that make others feel bad it's it's also healing because it makes me realize that you never know what the person has been through um, you never know why they're doing what they're doing um, and it's 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 important not to assume immediately that they're doing it to hurt you even though it might appear that way if you're if you're in the moment but it's important to step back and think about some things they might have suffered that you have no idea about that makes that makes them do this and they haven't healed it yet and the only thing they can do is act out and that's that's what they do sometimes almost uncontrollably and um, so this experience also taught me how to seek to be more compassionate towards others. I, I'm not always successful. Sometimes I do get caught up um, in, in, in feeling like something's being a personal attack or, or it's about me. But it's, it's important to, to be able to step away from that. And, and it's helping this experience, understanding it, healing it, and coming all this way is helping me have more compassion towards others. This is my story about uh, being body shamed and where I've gone and how long I've come and, um, and the journey from being ashamed of my body, feeling completely out of control of my body to where I am now uh, using my body as, as a tool to literally inspire art and being physically active and being joyous and wearing the clothes that I like and wearing no makeup on video and um, just being who I am and, and being content and happy with that and not feeling like I need to change myself in order to be good enough. I do feel good enough. I do feel worthy now, but it's a journey. So it's never a final state. It's always a ongoing process and I'm committed to showing my body respect and love and appreciation and embracing myself just as I am with all the flaws, all the things that are not perfect, everything. Just completely accepting and embracing the person that I am. So I hope this message has helped you in some way. I hope you've enjoyed my story and I hope that there is something in it for you some takeaway, some, some healing, something that will make your life better, will make your experience better, and hopefully will bring you closer to self-love and self-respect and self-acceptance. Um, and please never, never diminish the value of that. It's the most important thing in your life. If you hate yourself, it's a very dark place. And I do not wish that on anyone. It's, it's not good and it makes you do things that hurt you and you choose to do them because you feel like you deserve to be hurt you deserve to be treated badly and all it's it all stems from that place of self hatred and, and self um, deprecation and if any of you are in that place and you ever want to talk please reach out to me. I would love to talk with you, even if it's just a conversation.
conversation. I mean it, I really do. Um, if you want me to share more details about my story, I could do that as well. Um, I, I want to help you um, introduce more self-love into your life. And, and that's the purpose of me sharing this message today. So um, I love you guys all very much. I hope you can feel my love. And again, I hope this message serves you in some way or form. And if it does, just one person, just a little bit, my mission is accomplished. So um, thanks so much for watching. I will be seeing you in the next video whenever I make one. And until then, I love you all very much.